What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Calvin, AKA C. Smith. In this video today, I'm gonna talk about the 2023 UCI Cycling World Championships on Zwift, which is taking place on February 18th. So we're gonna talk about where to watch the race, the format of the races. I'm gonna give my opinion on potential strategies that I think might take place. And then lastly, I'll talk about some riders that you wanna keep an eye out for during this event. The first thing we need to talk about is the format of the 2023 UCI Esports Cycling World Championship because this is not going to be like any other traditional race that you're used to seeing, especially the real life race. Zwift and UCI have decided to put together three separate races where they start with 100 riders in the first round and then the second round gets down to 30, 30 riders and then the last round is going to be 10 riders that fight for the rainbow jersey. Zwift and UCI have categorized these three rounds as the punch, the climb, and then the podium. The first round, the punch, is when they start with 100 riders. The second round, the climb, is when it's going to be down to 30 riders. And then the last round, the podium, is when 10 riders are battling for the rainbow jersey. Now each race is supposed to last only approximately 20 minutes, so what I think you can expect and what I expect is a super high intensity race each round. And I think it will make for some good um, action for us to, to watch and experience because 20 minutes is gonna be an all out effort regardless of what type of rider you are. I don't think the endurance factor is gonna play a big part in these races because with them being back to back like this, this is gonna be high intensity for each round, especially the last round. Now for the first round, the punch, from what I can tell, I think that map will be the Rolling Highlands, which is a part of Swift Scotland's New World. The second round, the climb, will be on another Swift Scotland route called City and Sugar. They actually spell the sugar differently, so I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. From what I can tell, the podium round, which is the final round, will be on the Swift Scotland world of the Buckle Yin. The first round with the punch, I think what these larger teams might do when you have to consider that second round is the climb. They'll probably be making sure whatever climber is on their team makes it to that next round because the first round is only rolling terrain, which the climber should be fine. But I can envision that maybe the puncher riders will be the ones working for the climbers to make sure they move on to the next round. Because you have to think only 30 people from 100 riders are making it. So I can guess that especially the teams with more numbers than the smaller teams will be making sure that they get a rider that can climb to that next round. The climb round will be on a map that's about 8.5 kilometers and 162 meters of climbing, but they're gonna do hill repetitions. So you definitely need a climber on that map. Only 10 riders from this round will move forward to the final round. So if you don't have somebody in there that can climb do hill repetitions you're not your chances of winning a rainbow jersey are not looking good i'm very interested to see how much climbing they get in with 162 meters per ascent you can guess it's going to be about 20 minutes total for that event and with that it will be interesting to see if we have teams that have multiple riders make it to this round and if one rider is willing to sacrifice their chances at a rainbow jersey to be their domestique so to speak on each effort up the climb the last round will be the podium round where each rider is eliminated depending on when they get to an archway. So in my mind, this reminds me of, um, I think it's called the Red Bull Last Stand Race. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but whoever is the last to finish on that lap gets eliminated. And this sounds similar to that format. And this will make for a really, really interesting race. You have 10 riders. So again, if somebody has a teammate that makes it to this round with them, that will be huge to lead them to each archway. But again, if they finish in the last place in that archway, that teammate will be eliminated. So I think this is with a round where it's gonna get really, really entertaining and exciting. And you have to remember, this is after the first and second round. And the second round is gonna be the hill repeats. So definitely fatigue is gonna be set in at this point. In terms of riders to watch that I think you should keep your eye on, number one, and who I'm rooting for is Ed Laverick. I know many of you guys probably know of uh, Ed and his channel on YouTube. Ed will be representing Great Britain in this in this race, and I think that second round 
just seeing what he's been capable of. Um, I think the second round will really suit him. As far as the United States riders, you wanna keep an eye on Ryan Larson and Brian Duffy. From what I've seen on their Zwift power page, they're definitely two strong riders you wanna keep an eye out for. In terms of Australian riders, you wanna keep an eye on Freddie Ovette and Kyle Morwood. Both have strong rider profiles, and I know Freddie has been active in, I think it was either last year's UCI Esports Championship or the one prior, but he put on a good showing. And then his teammate, Kyle, um, who I see is a father of three, so I'm rooting for Kyle, because I know how hard it is to train with the family. And then from Canada, I would keep an eye on Thomas Thrall. In terms of women riders to keep an eye out for, from Australia, I would keep an eye on Vicky Whitelaw, who has a very strong Zwift power profile. From Great Britain, Charlotte Cloclo. And I would keep an eye on Haley Simmons as well from Great Britain, which you guys might be familiar with. She was in last year's UCI Esports World Championship. From Canada, I would keep an eye on Mayren Lawson, who got third place, I believe, in the National Junior Time Trial Championships. And she also got top 10 in the road race. So very strong rider. She's from Canada. Monalee Keller as well from Canada. She's a mom and I'm rooting for her too. I'm always rooting for the riders who have multiple obligations outside of riding because it takes so much commitment and training to keep your fitness up, especially for events at this level. So guys, that's my quick overview on the UCI Esports Cycling World Championships that's gonna be on Zwift on February 18th. Let me know what you guys think strategy-wise. What do you think the team will do? Because this is gonna be really, really different. It's not like a road race. So strategy has to be really, really different. Also, what do you think about the race format? Do you like this? Would you prefer to see a more traditional road race? Uh, let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.